Master Clits, Episode 1 to 5. In one of Twitchy Media's live streaming rooms, a young woman wearing a bunny girl outfit was dancing seductively in front of the camera while exposing an increasing amount of her cleavage. Soon enough, numerous appreciative comments flooded the screen. Damon Hemsworth clutched his phone so tightly that the veins on his hands were visible. He was furious because the woman who was exposing her body on the screen of his cell phone was his girlfriend, Jessica Wilson. Although Damon had always known that Jessica was a live streamer on Twitchy Media, she had told him that she only streamed herself singing and dancing. How could she be so slutty in front of everyone? He thought, appalled. Before he could call and confront her, notifications started appearing on the screen, announcing gifts and donations that her fans were sending her. One of the messages stood out among all the others. Hillwood Noah Hudson sends $1,000. An instant later, another notification popped up. Hillwood Noah Hudson sends another $1,000. After the messages announcing such generous donations, the screen was instantly filled with comments. Bro, you must be rich. Wow, this guy has way too much money. Jessica smiled broadly and bowed. Damon couldn't figure out whether she was doing it to intentionally show off her cleavage. Thank you, Noah, baby. I love you the most. As Damon watched his girlfriend publicly flirting with another man, it felt like his self-esteem was being trampled. And it was even more difficult because he actually knew who the man was. Noah Hudson was a rich kid who went to Hillwood University with Damon and Jessica. But however shocked Damon already felt, the next words that appeared from Noah on the screen dropped an even bigger bombshell. I've already seen you performing like this in front of me in the hotel room. You have to give me something more exciting right now, or I'll leave. Damon felt his stomach drop, and he started to tremble with anger as he read the new comment. What hotel room is he talking about? Did Jessica cheat on me? He wondered. He knew his girlfriend was charming and attractive, but she had always seemed so honest and responsible. How could she be sleeping with another guy behind my back? He could no longer stand to look at the screen, so he took out his phone and called Jessica. He was shocked by her words and the impatient tone of her voice as she answered the call. Why are you calling again? I said I'm not interested in whatever you're trying to sell, so give it up already. I'm busy. After hanging up without letting him speak, Jessica continued with her live show, and she became even bolder than before. She pulled down the neckline of her already low-cut outfit, revealing even more of her cleavage to please her audience. Almost instantly, the number of gifts and donations from the viewers increased. Damon clenched his fists tightly. He had given Jessica three months of his hard-earned savings to purchase the latest smartphone, the very phone that he had just called her on. How dare she treat me like some cold caller? He fumed, but what surprised him even more than the way she had treated him was that Jessica could act so unscrupulously in front of her fans just to earn some extra money. Another comment appeared from Hillwood Noah Hudson. Jessica, you can end your live show now. Since there's a limit to the things you can do in the public stream, let's do a private video call instead. When he saw Jessica end her live stream as Noah had instructed her, Damon's heart sank to his stomach. How could she? Damon felt deeply hurt as he witnessed the betrayal unfolding before him. Outraged comments began to appear on the screen. Did our goddess just end her live show? Noah, please share the video with me. Noah Hudson, don't you know that sharing is caring? You've got to remember your other brothers here. Damon grew increasingly furious as he read through the lecherous comments on Jessica's stream. He felt ready to kill the men who were lusting over his girlfriend. Before he could figure out what he should do next, he received a text message from Jessica. Damon, I want to break up. I don't love you anymore. We're just not right for each other. Damon slammed his fist on the table. He was incensed. All she cares about is money, he thought. Looking back on his relationship with Jessica, his impression of her changed completely. Without the benefit of rose-tinted glasses, he realized that her relentless vanity had led her to care about nothing but buying high-end designer products that were way out of their price range. As her boyfriend, 
Damon had tried every means he could to fulfill her wishes. But now, he was finally realizing that her craving for luxury goods was a bottomless pit that could never be satisfied. A few hours later, once the worst of his rage had started to abate, Damon realized that he was hungry. Unfortunately, he knew he had no money left to buy food until his next paycheck at the end of the month. He had spent all his savings and more on Jessica's phone. Feeling helpless, he sighed heavily and decided to go to the local supermarket to try and get some free food samples. As he walked toward the store, Damon realized that someone was following him. For a crazy instant, he wondered whether Noah had sent someone to warn him off Jessica. But when he glanced over his shoulder, he saw an elegant man in an expensive suit looking him up and down. Damon stopped and turned to confront the man. Why are you following me? The man smiled as he pulled a photograph out of his jacket pocket and compared the likeness to Damon. After a few seconds, he breathed a sigh of relief and said in a respectful tone, Sir, I've finally found you. You are Damon Hemsworth, correct? Damon was taken aback. He shrugged awkwardly. That depends. What's going on? Is this some prank? Who put you up to it? The man replied hastily. Sir, I can assure you that this is not a prank. My name is Thomas Hale, and I'm your father's personal assistant. He asked me to come and speak with you. Damon was shocked. He replied cautiously. Well, I'm Damon Hemsworth, but I don't have a father. His mother had always told him that his father was a scumbag who had left them when Damon was young. She insisted that he shouldn't even think of him as his father, but things were about to change. The truth is that Mr. Hemsworth was forced to abandon you and your mother. It was not his choice. He had to take on his family business, so he had no option but to leave you. Now, he sold part of the business, and he wants to send you some money to help with your expenses. As he spoke, Thomas took his phone out of his pocket and started tapping at the screen. Wait, you're telling me that my father had to leave to take care of his family business? He had another family he should have taken care of. He left me and my mom. I no longer consider him my father. The next moment, Damon got an alert on his phone. Your bank account has received an instant transfer of 100 million American dollars. Your balance is now 100 million dollars and three cents. Damon was dumbfounded. He kept checking that he had read the message correctly. He checked his online account, then called the bank, and everything confirmed that he had actually received a hundred million dollars. How can this be real? Thomas had been waiting patiently while Damon processed the news, and he took this as his cue to speak up again. Mr. Hemsworth is doing very well. He plans eventually to come back to you after he's finished sorting out the Serafino family's business. He's also instructed me to ask you to do two things. The first is that you should try to keep a low profile for now. And the second is to ensure that your mother doesn't suffer from any more hardship. Damon's jaw dropped with this new information. It was already shocking enough to think that his father was a billionaire but he couldn't work out what the man could possibly have to do with the Serafino family. Everyone knew the Serafino name. They ran a huge international financial business, like an empire spanning the entire globe, and they were major shareholders in all of the biggest global conglomerates. They were the wealthiest family in the world. The previous year, they had dominated the global family rich list with a net worth of $150 trillion. Uh, Mr. Hemsworth, if you have any questions or concerns in the future, please call me. There's no problem that the Serafino family can't solve. He handed Damon a card with his phone number on, and then handed him a bank card and a key with the address of a mansion in the city center. As soon as Thomas left, Damon's phone rang. He glanced at the screen and saw that it was Noah. Noah, I'm on to you. First you stole my girlfriend, and now you're trying to embarrass me in public and make me a joke across the whole university. I don't care anymore. She's all yours. But if you dare to talk shit about me, you'll be sorry. As he waited for Noah's response, Damon thought angrily, I'm rich now. 
I'm done being the same old Damon Hemsworth I used to be. It's time to get my revenge. Why aren't you at work yet? Noah asked Damon over the phone. Damon struggled to hear him over the noise in the background, and he guessed that Noah was in the Galaxy Bar. It was the main student haunt where Damon worked part-time. I'm on my way. He replied, trying to stay calm, but he was shocked by Noah's next words. I'm not calling to find out where you are. I just want to ask which of the bar's VIP rooms you'd recommend. Your gorgeous girlfriend drank too much, and now she's all over me. I want to take her to a private room. Damon took a deep breath, knowing that Noah was deliberately trying to provoke him. First he stole Jessica from me, and now he's rubbing it in. He thought. He tried to control his rage, knowing that losing his temper over the phone would only mean that Noah had won. But then he heard Jessica's voice in the background, and his blood boiled. Noah, why did you ask Damon? He only does deliveries and works behind the bar, so he won't know anything about the private rooms. He could never afford to reserve one himself, so he won't know which to recommend. <laughs> Noah laughed loudly and then hung up the phone. As Damon seized, he received a text message from Jessica. Damon, don't go around reminding everyone on campus that we were together. I'm Noah's girlfriend now, and I don't want our past relationship to upset him. Although Damon knew that his relationship with Jessica was over, he was finding it difficult to accept. She was the first girl he had ever fallen in love with, and he still cared about her. He replied to her text. So, you've been with Noah all this while? Yes. I've been sleeping with him for a few months. He loves buying me presents. You know I have expensive tastes. You could never give me the life I wanted. Damon was so angry that his whole body was shaking, but Jessica blocked his number before he had a chance to respond. Fuming, he thought about how she had never really given their relationship a chance. She had ended it and moved on before they had even got to know each other properly. Thank goodness I found out what she's really like before I inherited dad's money. To cheer himself up, Damon went to a liquor store and bought an expensive bottle of whiskey. Back at the university campus, he sat on a bench next to the baseball court and sipped from the bottle. Just as he took the last swig, he received a message from his roommate. Damon, your mom's here to give you your living expenses. Where are you right now? He quickly stood up and rushed back to his dorm. He knew that his mother had worked hard to provide for him as a child and had sacrificed her own dreams to take care of him. I want to use my money to get revenge on Noah and Jessica, but first I need to make sure mom can finally enjoy her life. He thought to himself as he approached his hall of residence. He found his mother waiting for him on a bench outside. She looked nervous and awkward. Esther quickly stood up and greeted her son. Then, she pulled some money from her bag. Damon, I was just passing by and I realized I hadn't given you any money to cover your living expenses this month. You must make sure you eat well, and you must tell me if you don't have enough money for food, all right? She tried to push a wad of banknotes into Damon's hand. He knew that she always gave most of her money to him and kept very little of her wages to take care of herself. His heart was filled with both sorrow and gratitude. He hurriedly pushed her hand away and smiled. Mom, you don't have to give me money anymore, and my wages are enough to live on. In fact, I have a little left over. Why don't we go to the mall and buy you some new clothes? Esther knew that her clothes were outdated and worn, and she felt very self-conscious about the way she looked. She hoped that her shabby appearance didn't embarrass her son. Damon didn't care what other people thought, but he was aware that his mother hadn't been able to buy herself any new clothes for a long time. She blushed and quickly replied, Why would I need you to buy me new clothes? It would be a waste of money. I have plenty of comfortable clothes to wear. Damon smiled. He realized that his mother wasn't used to spending money on herself, but he was determined to help her and insisted on taking her to the Wembley Mall. Once they reached the mall, he dragged her toward one of the most high-end clothing stores. They would normally have walked straight past such an expensive boutique, but finally, Damon had the confidence to go inside. Mom? Pick any dress you like, 
and I'll buy it for you. She frowned and asked cautiously. What are you saying? You know we can't afford anything here. A dress would be at least a hundred dollars. While they were hesitating at the door, a sales assistant standing just inside overheard Esther's words and looked at her disdainfully. Sorry, but this is an exclusive boutique. We don't sell cheap hundred dollar dresses. We only offer genuine designer items. She stepped over to stop Damon and Esther from entering the store, worried that such scruffy customers would affect the boutique's image. Damon was furious. What do you mean by that? I thought my meaning was very clear. Since you can't afford the clothes here, we would prefer that you don't come in and waste our time. Thoroughly humiliated, Esther quickly grabbed Damon's arm and tried to drag him away from the store. She looked at the woman apologetically and said, I'm sorry. My son just wanted to buy me some new clothes. We didn't realize that this store is so expensive. We're leaving. But Damon refused to move from the doorway. In the past, he had always backed down to wealthy and powerful people. But things were different now. He would no longer allow himself to be bullied. I'm interested to know exactly which clothes here I can't afford. He said as he took a bank card out of his wallet and handed it to the sales assistant. It was the card that Thomas had given him, and it had the Serafino family emblem on it. But the sales assistant didn't bother to look at the card properly. She glimpsed at it briefly, and then threw it into the trash. She spoke in a voice filled with contempt. I'm telling you that every item of clothing in our store costs at least a thousand dollars. I'm afraid you couldn't even afford to buy a pair of socks here. I suggest you try the thrift shop on the high street. Now please leave immediately. She tried to usher them away. If you don't go right now, I'll call the cops. Damon struggled to control his temper. Just as he was about to argue with her, they heard a dignified male voice from the other side of the store. Is this how you treat our customers? Damon quickly looked in the direction of the voice and saw a middle-aged man approaching them. He was dressed in a smart designer suit and he was giving the sales assistant a thunderous look. The woman suddenly looked alarmed. Her face drained of color as she turned to greet the man. Damon was astonished at the change in attitude of the haughty sales assistant. I've never seen anyone look so terrified. Why on earth is she so scared? The well-dressed man was Ted Gunsley, the executive director of the American division of the company that owned the boutique. He rarely visited the store in person, and the sales assistant was stunned to see him. Mr. Gunsley, it's such a pleasure to see you. To what do we owe the honor? Is there anything I can help you with? Ted stared at her coldly and asked, Miss Amersham, were you not told in your training that all our customers are VIPs? Is that really the way you treat VIPs? The sales assistant, Lucy Amersham, was so focused on finding a way to exonerate herself that she didn't appreciate the gravity of her situation. She immediately started trying to defend herself. Mr. Gunsley, I'm sure that if you fully understood the situation, you would realize that this customer can't afford to buy our clothes. Of course, I always do my utmost to welcome all our customers, but these people are obviously just wasting our time. Our products are targeted at a certain clientele and we have our reputation to consider. Ted was unimpressed with Lucy's excuses. He scowled at her and then walked over to the trash can and retrieved Damon's bank card. After wiping the card clean on his jacket sleeve, he handed it back to Damon. Lucy was appalled and she felt ashamed of the director's actions. His suit was worth tens of thousands of dollars, but he had actually taken the card out of the trash and wiped it on his own sleeve. As Ted handed the card to Damon, his expression instantly changed. He looked at the student with an expression of disbelief and asked, Is this card yours? Damon nodded to confirm that it was. Lucy was feeling increasingly anxious and she rushed to interrupt. I'm sorry, Mr. Gunsley. I know I shouldn't have thrown this customer's bank card away, but he was refusing to leave and I was starting to lose patience with the situation. But Ted had heard enough. He turned to her and shouted angrily, Enough! Go and make coffee for our two customers. And don't even think about asking for a performance bonus this year. Of course, if you don't like my decision, you can always quit. After handing the bank card to Damon, Ted still felt uneasy. 
He had only recognized the card because he had spent so much time attending corporate dinners with some of America's top executives. He thought, Thank goodness I arrived when I did. If someone like this had been insulted in one of their stores, the head of the company would certainly have heard about it, and my job could be on the line. Sir, welcome to our store. Please choose any item of clothing you like, and it will be our gift to you by way of an apology. Damon knew that Ted had recognized the bank card in his hand, and that was the reason he was trying so hard to appease him. He shook his head and said, If I want anything, I can pay for it myself, but it seems that we're not welcome in your store. Ted flashed him a smile. Although he was usually very calm, he could feel himself starting to perspire. He knew he couldn't afford to offend the young man standing in front of him. He quickly retrieved two cards from his wallet and handed them to Damon and Esther. Please accept these gold member cards. They will entitle you to various benefits at all of our stores. I hope you weren't too offended by Miss Amersham's behavior. I would like to apologize for her rudeness and assure you she will be dealt with. Damon felt much better when he saw how hard the director was trying to make amends. It was the first time anyone had ever treated him with so much respect. Do you actually know who I am? Ted shook his head, thought for a moment, and then answered, I'm really sorry I don't, I don't think our paths have crossed. However, I do recognize the bank card that you're holding. Damon nodded his understanding and then looked at Lucy, who was clearly starting to panic. He felt that he didn't have the time or desire to avenge such a small grievance and decided not to pursue the matter any further. There's no need to get a lowly employee like her fired, he thought. She probably depends on this job for a living, so it would be ruthless to act too harshly. As Damon and Esther walked away, Lucy looked up at Ted with a pleading expression. Mr. Gunsley, who exactly was that young man? She had worked in the store for many years, but she had never seen her director treat anyone with so much deference. Ted glared at her and replied coldly. You're very lucky he didn't want to make an official complaint. It might even have led to the closing of this store. Don't you know that you can't judge a book by its cover? I don't know the identity of that young man, but I recognize the bank card he was holding, and I can assure you that very few people will ever be in a position to afford one of those. Lucy was aghast. She could scarcely believe what she was hearing, but one look at his expression convinced her that he was serious. After buying some clothes for his mother at another store, Damon took her for a meal at a nearby restaurant. Then, he called a taxi to take her home. After he waved her off, he headed back to campus. On his way, he turned on his phone to discover that the class group chat was buzzing with messages. Following the comments on Jessica's live stream, everyone knew that she had danced specifically for Noah and had then arranged to meet him in person. Everyone at Hillwood University now knew that Jessica had dumped Damon for Noah, and they were busy speculating about why. Most assumed that Jessica saw Damon as a poor, useless loser who couldn't give her what she wanted. As Damon was skimming through the comments, he received a message on his phone from Noah. Are you still coming to work today? If so, pick us up some condoms on the way here. I've promised Jessica a special reward for being the top streamer on her platform but I don't want to get her pregnant. Fuming, Damon logged onto Jessica's live stream. To his surprise, he found that she was doing a pole dance live on screen. <laughs> she does have a perfect body, and she knows how to show it off with sexy lingerie. He watched for a moment as the appreciative comments, gifts, and donations rolled across the screen. Noah was also clearly visible standing behind Jessica in the live stream. If she had still been his girlfriend, Damon would have been furious with her for allowing one of her admirers to be in the room with her. Damon could finally see exactly what Jessica was capable of. I'll get my revenge. He vowed once again. In a private room at the Galaxy Bar, Jessica was performing a seductive dance and streaming it on her live platform. When the music finished, she walked up to Noah, put her arm around his neck, and kissed him passionately. Her streaming profile was going crazy, with comments flashing across the screen almost too quickly to see. Then, in full view of her fans, Noah casually picked up his phone and sent her a gift of a thousand dollars. 
That was more than a month's living expenses for most students, but it was merely pocket money for him. Appreciative comments flooded onto Jessica's profile. Noah, you're so cool. You've donated almost $5,000 this week. Jessica's definitely going to be number one in the rankings now. Yeah, Noah's the best. I'm so happy to be with you, Noah. Jessica sat on Noah's lap while the live stream continued. The streaming platform that she used was only open to university students, and most of them didn't have much money to spend. Normally, receiving a contribution of $2,000 would guarantee a streamer a place in the weekly top 10 rankings. But Noah had tipped Jessica a total of $5,000 that week, so she knew there was a good chance that she would hit the top spot which is why she was stunned to open the rankings and find that her name wasn't even listed. That's just not possible. There must be a bug in the system. She'd only checked five minutes ago, and she was in second place then. She hastily opened the profiles of the top 10 ranking streamers and discovered that they had each received a donation of $10,000 in the last few minutes. Scarcely able to believe it, she showed Noah her phone. What should she do? Their tips are way above mine. Noah waved his hand indifferently, indicating that it would be no problem at all for him to help her get back into the top 10. He was the richest student at the university, and he knew no one could afford to compete with him. When he saw how upset she was, he sighed and said, Don't worry, I'll help you boost your ranking. I'll make sure you get to the top. Then, he pledged a donation of $15,000 on Jessica's profile. She grinned gratefully, but before she could relax and enjoy her glass of wine, the rankings on the list changed again. She was only in the number one spot for a matter of seconds before quickly dropping back out of the top 10. When she studied the list again, she found that each of the top 10 streamers had received another incredible donation, this time of $30,000 each. What the hell's going on? Jessica wondered desperately. Noah was also surprised. He opened the top 10 list and quickly ascertained that the recent contributions to the other streamers had all been donated by the same person. He scowled as he read that person's username, no top 10, for jerk and bitch. Jessica and Noah instantly thought of Damon when they saw the username, but they looked at each other and shook their heads in unison. Oh, Damon would love to do something like this, but there's no way a loser like him could afford it. Did you offend anyone else? Noah was so angry about the mystery viewer that he ignored her question. Who would dare mess with me? <laughs> right, you bonehead. Do you really think you can compete with my money? Well, there's plenty more where that came from. Before Noah could act on his words, everyone in the top 10 list received an additional donation of $50,000. Noah would have to tip Jessica at least that amount to get her back into the top 10. Jessica shrieked when she saw it. Noah, you have to help me. I promise I'll do anything you want to pay you back. As she kneeled down by his feet and looked up at him with pleading eyes, Noah sighed deeply. Even for a rich kid like him, $50,000 was a considerable amount of money. He hesitated and then said, Jessica, why don't we just forget it this week and try again next week? I'm sure you'll get to number one then. Why should I give her so much money just so she can get her name on the top 10 list? He thought grumpily. I'd much rather spend the money enjoying myself. He also realized that the person making the huge pledges to the other streamers was deliberately competing with him. If I give Jessica $50,000, the other person will just increase the stakes again, he thought. Jessica also knew that she was asking for a lot of money from Noah, but she had already boasted on social media about getting first place. She knew that a lot of her competitors despised her success and were waiting to see her fail. If I don't at least make it to the top 10, people will call me a worthless loser. She thought. Noah, can you please? She started to beg, but Noah had made his decision and he didn't let her finish. No, that's enough. You should go home now and I'll come find you later. 
He turned his back on her and walked into the main bar. Jessica followed him. His meaning was implicit in his words. He was losing his patience with her. Jessica knew that without him, she would never get into the top 10 list and that she shouldn't risk irritating him. I worked so hard to get him, she thought. I can't offend him now or it will all be for nothing. Realizing she had no choice, she forced a smile and spoke meekly. Of course, Noah. If that's what you want, I'll wait for you in my room. Meanwhile, Damon had arrived at the bar. He had watched everything that happened on Jessica's stream, and he smiled to himself when he saw her leaving the bar alone. He could guess exactly what had happened between her and Noah. Noah glanced in his direction and noticed him immediately. Still fuming about being humiliated on Jessica's live stream, he was ready to vent his anger on someone, and Damon seemed like the perfect victim. Oh good, you're here just in time. So where are the condoms I asked you to bring? I hope you brought them. I don't want to make your woman pregnant. Damon scowled but said nothing. Noah shook his head complacently while he pulled out a handful of money and waved it in Damon's face. Come on, you jerk. Are you waiting for me to pay you a delivery fee? Just give me the condoms and get lost. As he spoke, he scattered the money all over the ground in front of Damon, who watched his performance with growing fury and contempt. In the past, Damon's poverty had cost him his dignity. But I'm not the same man I used to be. He reminded himself. Why don't you get out of here? Noah picked up a glass from the table and threw wine all over Damon's face. Get lost, jackass. By the way, that glass of wine cost $50. You should be thanking me for such a treat. Now stop making a fool of yourself and leave. Damon seethed with rage. I'll make sure he pays for the way he's treated me. He promised himself. He stood threateningly close to Noah, making it clear that he wasn't going to back down. Two minutes. Damon calmly pointed toward the exit. I'll give you two minutes to get out of here. Noah was stunned and decided he must have misheard him. After thinking for a moment, he chuckled. <laughs> Dude, are you on something? Are you high? Did you really just tell me to leave? I think I must have heard you wrong. I said, get out of here, right now. Noah threw his hands up to the sky and laughed loudly. He then pointed at Damon. Who the hell are you to order me to leave? Have you got brain damage? I spend thousands of dollars in this bar every year, so why would I leave? Damon walked to the stage and picked up a microphone. After clearing his throat, he made an announcement. Hey everyone, please quiet down for a minute. I have something I want you all to hear. The bar instantly fell silent as everyone wondered what Damon was going to say. He had worked at the Galaxy Bar for a long time, and the regulars all knew him. Most of them thought he was a kind person, but that he was also shy and lacked self-esteem. They never would have imagined him standing on stage and making announcements to the whole bar. Stop now. The bartender urged Damon in a low voice. Don't say anything you'll regret. But Damon ignored him as he looked directly at Noah and asked into the microphone. Do you really think you're so rich? Noah snorted coldly and thought. <laughs> this is ridiculous. He's just making a fool of himself. Damon then announced. Everyone's drinks are on me tonight. Feel free to drink as much as you like. Then he pointed to Noah and continued. Of course, that means everyone except the jerk and the bitch. Finally, he looked at the bar manager and asked. Since I've already paid for everyone's drinks and given you more than a generous bonus, I'm sure you'll be happy to help me kick him out, right? The bar manager nervously counted the money Damon had given him. It came to $20,000, which was way more than the Galaxy Bar would usually earn in a night. And Damon had told him it was just a retainer, which meant the total takings for everyone's drinks would be even more. He quickly nodded and replied, Yes, the bill's been paid. Everyone's drinks are free tonight. The whole bar went crazy, and everyone started cheering. 
Then, the bartender announced that Noah had to leave. The crowd immediately turned to Noah and started shouting and mocking him. Get out now, get out! Didn't you hear what the manager said? Get out. Noah was stunned. He had never imagined that he would one day be ousted by his university mates. Even more shocking was the fact that a loser like Damon was behind it. Incredulous, he rushed to the bar, only to find Damon had indeed paid the bill for everyone's drinks. Frowning in disbelief, he asked him, Where did you get the cash? How could you suddenly have so much money? Damon didn't bother to answer his question. I said, get out of here. The other students started yelling at Noah again. Get out now, didn't you hear what Damon said? Go on, get lost, you're not wanted here. Stop making a scene. You, you, you asshole, I'll get you back for this. Noah was trembling with anger as he continued. This university is mine. I'll let you win this time, but just wait and... Damon didn't wait to hear his threat. Interrupting, he said in a low voice, The show has just begun, and your good days are coming to an end. What's coming next will be worse than your darkest nightmare. Noah was stunned by Damon's threat. He thought, What, what does he mean? And how can a guy like him become rich overnight? It's impossible. Because Noah had been born into a wealthy family, he knew that the rich kept getting richer from the profits of their investments, and that it was almost impossible for those less fortunate to become wealthy overnight. Damon Hemsworth, I don't know where you got the money from, but remember, I have plenty too. You know what? I was just leaving the bar anyway, so it's all yours. He stood up and slammed a wine bottle onto the table in front of Damon. It smashed to pieces. I'm out of here. Wait. Damon didn't want to let Noah leave. What do you want? Noah paused. Looking at him suspiciously, Damon walked over to the cashier, grabbed a black check holder, and opened it. According to this, it appears you haven't paid for your drinks yet. Noah examined the check and saw that it had yet to be settled. It's only $300. He mumbled as he took his credit card out of his wallet and tossed it onto the cashier's desk. The cashier took the card and swiped it. A beep sounded, and he looked at Noah. Something was clearly wrong. Sorry, sir. Your card has been declined. That's impossible. Please check again. The cashier rechecked the card and confirmed it had been frozen. What's going on? Noah wondered as he took out his other credit cards. Each one declined as he stood wide-eyed, staring at the machine. This is crazy. He groaned, reaching for his phone. Uh, I don't understand what's going on. Noah dialed his father's number. Dad, why can't I use any of my credit cards? His father sounded anxious and agitated. Just hold on. The police are knocking at the door. Noah felt as though he couldn't breathe. What's going on? He quietly demanded, but his father had ended the call. What the hell's happening? He wondered. Starting to panic, he had guessed his family's income was mostly illegal for them to have become so wealthy so quickly. But as long as he had money to lead a luxurious lifestyle, he didn't question it. He supported his father wholeheartedly. He didn't have time to worry about what was happening to his father, because if he couldn't pay the bar, he wouldn't be able to leave. He looked back at one of his friends behind him. Lend, lend me some money. I'll give it back to you tomorrow. It was only $300, and he knew his friend could afford that. He quickly paid and was about to leave, but Damon stopped him once again. Damon had always felt inferior when he had been struggling financially. But since he had inherited the money, he was now in a position to look down on others. You seem to have forgotten that you broke a bottle of wine I already paid for. Damon growled as he glared at Noah. Since you broke it, you should pay for it. Their friends were surprised at Damon's sudden aggression. It's just a bottle of wine, for goodness sake. Noah replied irately as he slammed the palm of his hand onto the table. H how much did it cost? I'll pay for it if that makes you happy. Cool. Well, the bottle you broke was a vintage from 1955, so thank you very much. 
Damon replied brightly. Noah studied the wine list and froze. The price listed was over $9,000. You've got to be kidding. This must be the most expensive bottle in the bar. He thought, dumbfounded. How could it possibly cost so much? I've never even had a glass. Excuse me, sir. Damon said to the bartender, interrupting Noah's thoughts. I just want to know how my friend here should pay for the wine. The bartender looked up at Damon and politely smiled. He treated Damon with respect because he was paying for everyone's drinks that night. Don't worry about that. We have several ways of collecting what's owed to the bar. Noah's eyebrows shot up in disbelief and his mouth hung open. What the hell do you mean by that? He angrily demanded. I wasn't the one who ordered the wine in the first place. Do you know who you're talking to? I have no idea who you are or how influential your family is. The bartender snorted in return. But what I do know is that you need to pay for the wine. And if you don't, I'll deal with you. As he said that, he leaned forward and threateningly poked his finger toward Noah's face. If the amount isn't settled within three days, we'll be on your doorstep expecting payment in full. Noah backed away and glared at Damon. Never had he thought Damon would treat him like that and publicly humiliate him. You could always work here at the Galaxy Bar until the debt is paid in full. Damon coldly mocked and then snickered. He was enjoying Noah's discomfort. He knew that Noah had deliberately stolen Jessica from him and shamed him in front of his friends. But the tables had turned, and it was Noah's turn to be humiliated. Just wait and see. Noah roared as spittle flew from his mouth. <laughs> huh? What do you want me to wait and see? Your father has been arrested for fraud because he stole $30 million from his investors. He has a life sentence waiting for him, and without your daddy, you're nothing. He couldn't believe that all it had taken was half an hour to bring the Hudson family to its knees. It feels too good to be true, he thought gloatingly. That's bullshit. Noah shouted in disbelief. Damon took another bottle of vintage wine from the bar. He broke it on the counter and poured it over Noah's head. Remember how this tastes. It's the last good wine you'll ever have. After he had emptied the bottle over Noah, a group of drinkers who had been watching the goings on decided to get involved. They threw the rich kid who had fallen from grace out of the bar as though he was a drunk who couldn't pay his bill. Damon sat at the bar deep in thought and drank more expensive wine. He knew he would no longer be able to work at the bar and decided he wouldn't hide his wealth any longer. It's time to reveal my true identity as the Serafino's heir, he thought. Jessica walked into the bar. She had been waiting for Noah and had become anxious when he didn't appear, so had decided to go looking for him. She glanced around, and when she saw Damon, she walked up to him. What a bitch, he mused. She had been a goddess to him before the incident, but at that moment, he saw her as nothing more than a money-grabbing slut. He knew she would do anything for money. He felt like chucking a handful of banknotes into the air just to mess with her head, but at the last moment decided against it. She's not worth the bother, he thought. As she approached Damon, Jessica's eyes became slits. Where's Noah? He's gone, Damon replied, then turned his back on her. She didn't look one bit happy with him. Why are you sitting at the bar drinking? I thought you loved me so much that you would do anything to earn enough so we could have a family together. But it looks like I was wrong. All you're doing is wasting what little you have. Damon couldn't stop himself from smiling. If she saw a wealthy man drinking at a bar, she would be all over him. But when I have a drink, it's a waste of money. What's wrong with me using my own money to have a drink? Isn't it better than Noah who uses his father's money? She scowled at his response. What's going on with him today? She wondered. Really? Did you use your own money? Just be a man and admit that you stole it. Your mother would be ashamed of you. As she still hadn't seen Noah, she grabbed her purse and started to leave the bar. Damon looked at her in confusion. What do you mean? Damon Hemsworth, you're such a dumbass. I was an idiot to fall in love with you. You stole Alicia's money and bought clothes for your mother. I can't believe you still have the audacity to come here and drink. Just because Alicia's family is rich, it doesn't mean you should steal from her. He was blown away by what she said. She thinks I stole the money. I would never do that. He thought, perplexed. Alicia Mendez was Jessica's best friend. 
and after Damon and Jessica fell in love, she did everything in her power to persuade Jessica to stay away from him. Every time Alicia saw Damon, she seemed to be impatient and irritated. Alicia clearly had a poor opinion of Damon. He was aware of how Alicia felt about him, and he didn't talk to her anymore. But no matter what she thinks about me, I didn't steal from her, he thought. As Jessica left the bar, he took his phone out and called Alicia. Damon Hemsworth, what an unpleasant surprise. Why is a thief like you calling me? Fortunately, Jessica has finally come to her senses and dumped you. You should have the decency to leave her alone. Tell me, Alicia, what money did I steal from you? Damon demanded through gritted teeth. <laughs> what an idiot. I have nothing to say to you because your mother has already returned the $2,000 you stole. My mother? He thought, feeling stunned. My mother doesn't have that kind of money. When Esther had gone to the university and tried to give him his living expenses, he noticed she only had around $200 in her purse. I've never come across such an uncaring son like you. Alicia retorted, your mother came straight to the university from the hospital to give me the money. She's just leaving now. And here I am wondering which relative you borrowed it from while you sit at the bar drinking. The hospital? What was mom doing at the hospital? 